Hey, what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Gulp. In this tutorial, we're gonna finally take a look on how to generate the gold file.js and uh, what it's necessary for. So it's gonna be really fun. So let's assume that we have a project with a bunch of folders in it and we are working on our project with SCSS and uh, JavaScript ES6. So for example, we have like in my AWPS starter theme for WordPress, we have a source folder and an assets folder. And usually this is called like distribution or dist, so um, the projects or like these packages or these repositories are really similar between each other. But if we exit the source folder, we're gonna see that here probably in every project you're gonna find a scripts and an SCSS or SAS folder. So if we ask, access the script and we check a module, for example, the app.js, you see that the way this JavaScript is written, it's kind of weird. It's not a regular JavaScript, doesn't have a document ready, doesn't have a jQuery in it, is using a sort of class and then a constructor and then is using some uh, add ev event listener and a sort of like these arrow functions to update some specific options. Well, this is the new convention of JavaScript that is not new right now. It's not so new, it's kind of old, but this is called the ES6 convention. So is that the new scripting language of JavaScript that was updated a couple of years ago and now we are probably a ES8 or something. But whatever, the thing is that this type of JavaScript is not 100% understandable by every browser. I think Chrome is getting there, is starting to like automatically read and uh, trigger and use this type of JavaScript, but for all the other browsers, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Opera, and Safari, and blah, 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 we need to compile this JavaScript in order to be regular, simple vanilla JavaScript, readable and understandable by the browser. And if we go back to our basic folder and we check the assets, you will see that inside here we have, hey, a JS folder. So if we click on it, we have our main.min.js that it's a simply minified JavaScript written in regular JS, regular vanilla JavaScript. And this, even if it's not humanly readable, it's really readable for the browser. And you can also see that weights only 200 kilobytes. It's super small because it's minified. Well, all this process of grabbing whatever we have in our source folder, compile it and spit it out in the assets, it's done via Gulp. Let's take a look on how to generate this thing. So first, in our project, we wanna create a new directory called source, and then another directory called distribution. There you go. If we access our source, then we can make another directory called scss and another directory called js. And let's do the same for the distribution. So let's go inside our distribution folder and let's make a dir called js and let's make a dir called scss or actually let's make a dir called css. Perfect. Let's go back in our base folder. There you go. Now we have our regular structure of a pretty standard project. Now in our base folder where our package.json lives, let's generate a new file called gulpfile.js. So let's say touch gulpfile.js. Perfect. If we open this file, this is a regular JavaScript file that doesn't have anything inside and that's supposed to be like that. So what we have to do right now, we have to generate a bunch of variables to grab whatever dev dependencies we're using and then use those dev dependencies to trigger some specific automation tasks. So we know that in the previous lesson we installed Gulp and we have Gulp inside our project. We know that because it's inside the node modules and we scroll down, it's inside the Gulp node modules, but whatever. In order to tell our Gulp file to, hey, you should use Gulp, we just need to say, define a variable called, of course, Gulp, and this variable is gonna be equal to a require, we're using require to automatically grab whatever package we have inside the node modules. And let's say that our require needs to grab the gulp. 
and uh, every time we use require, automatically the JavaScript, or when we trigger Gulp, when we trigger NPM, and when we compile everything, require will automatically search inside the node modules folder and will search for the exact same name that we specify in the package.json. So if, for example, we have in our package.json here, and then we scroll in the dev dependencies. So in this case, I'm using a lot of dev dependencies. We're going to see how to use it, <laughs> how to use those. So if, for example, I'm requiring another package called gulp auto prefixer, and it's written gulp dash auto prefixer. If I need to require this file inside gulp or another JavaScript file, I need to remember this exact name because it's the same name of this package folder inside the node modules folder. So if I go back in my gulp file.js and I scroll down where I define the auto prefix, so look at that, I'm requiring with the same exact name. And this convention is identical for all your JavaScript files. If you have a dependencies or a dev dependencies that you need to use and you need to require, you need to do it by specifying the exact same name of that dependency. That makes sense, right? I hope so. So now that we have Gulp, we have access to all the preferences and information that Gulp comes with. And in our case, we just need to tap the task method of Gulp. And we're going to take care of defining some tasks in the next lesson. But what you need to understand now is that Gulp is just based on tasks. So every time we define a task that we can give a specific name, for example, if I give this task called styles, I can specify inside the styles task a nameless function. And inside this nameless function, I can compile all my CSS, SCSS, and speed out in the distribution folder the SCSS. And I can do all these tasks for whatever things I have. So in my case, it's going to be just simply JavaScript, ES6, and SCSS. But you can have multiple tasks taking care of multiple things. And then we can trigger these tasks one by one if we want, or we can trigger them all together with just one single gulp command. But we're going to take care of this in the next lesson. Well, it's pretty much it for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel, and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.